When Obsidian announced and showed off The Outer Worlds nearly five years ago, I was ecstatic about one of my favorite developers creating a new game similar to not only one of their best games, but one of the best RPGs I've ever played, Fallout New Vegas. Now, Obsidian is re-releasing The Outer Worlds with updated graphics and all of the DLC included in this bundle. The question is, is The Outer Worlds worth playing in 2023? Hi, I'm Mason. Let's talk about The Outer Worlds. I was starstruck when I first noticed how visually stunning The Outer Worlds truly is. Maybe it's because I'm a sucker for the retro-futuristic aesthetics, but I was genuinely amazed by how good the game looks, and how good it looks almost four years later. It reminds me of Borderlands or Bioshock in the sense that The Outer Worlds is not a game defined by technical engine use like dynamic lighting and shadows, long draw distances or ray tracing features, but strong aesthetics and style that the artists have rendered out to create a carefully designed universe. Every planet you explore will feature its own grand vistas to gaze upon, with vibrant colors that almost give off an ethereal glow, beautiful skyboxes that are filled with stars, meteors, and planets, and densely packed enclosed cities that give you the feeling you're on the set of an old-timey classic science fiction serial. And it's a perfect fit with the pulpy, sometimes campy tone The Outer Worlds is presenting on the surface. Look, I didn't mean what I said about your outfit. It's very fashionable, I swear. As bystanders, does this make us complicit? The Outer Worlds is on the smaller side when compared to other contemporary RPGs, or even when compared to its spiritual predecessor. Instead of a vast open world, the game features smaller, more focused hub worlds. Yet, the game still offers a good amount of exploration and depth with its quests and characters that you might miss a couple things within a single playthrough. The game can be beat within 30 to 40 hours if you're wanting to see everything the game has to offer, but if you just want to follow the main quest, I'd say you could beat it in 20 to 25 hours. As someone who is severely burnt out on gigantic open world games, The Outer Worlds is the perfect length and size for me. Some may see the smaller scope and think, The Outer Worlds is lesser than its older, post-apocalyptic brother. But once you jump in, you'll find out it's just of the same quality as Obsidian's previous work. What in law's name? Is that him? Oh, that idiot. I told him to plant the beacon and move away, not stand there holding it. The basic premise of The Outer Worlds follows your created character, called the Stranger in Game, as he is revived from cryosleep by a kooky scientist, Phineas Vernon Wells. Wells believes the Stranger can find the resources needed to revive the remaining colonists, and save the planetary colonies that have suffered due to the greed and incompetence of the various megacorporations that manage them. The corporations, known together as the Board, see Wells' plan to revive the colonists as foolish, and would further strain the already troubled societies. You can decide to follow Wells' plan, or join up with the various board members. It's similar to the factions in New Vegas, where your choices will be seen positively by some and negatively by others. It can get so bad that some characters will refuse to talk to you ever again just by actions they didn't care for. It's a mechanic that I loved in New Vegas, and Obsidian have nailed it once again in The Outer Worlds. It's not the best choice, it's Spacer's choice! Chase the freedom! It's usually controversial when a game has a political statement, and I hate to talk politics myself, but The Outer Worlds is incredibly relevant to our modern lives. We live in a post-pandemic world where wages are stagnant, inflation rates are higher than ever, and yet companies are raking in massive profits, not to mention consolidation between these already massive enterprises like Disney buying Fox, or more recently, Xbox's attempt to acquire Activision Blizzard King. These are real concerns, and The Outer Worlds addresses these concerns in a way that isn't one-sided. If Fallout is about the post-apocalyptic collapse after relentless unchecked capitalism, then The Outer Worlds is the late-stage capitalist dystopia that is on the verge of collapse. How can yield improvements of 26.7% not quicken the pulse? How can 32% cost savings not moisten the loins? The board made up of the various corporations have taken on the role of government in the Holosian galaxy, and they have each claimed different planets to grow their corporate empires. The company towns that the board have built keep the townsfolk as indentured slaves, and they're viewed as nothing more than corporate assets. Even suicide is considered damage to company property, meaning they will be fined by the company and have their graves rented out until the fine is paid. Hell, the graves don't even have epitaphs, but the person's net worth etched on. These colonists don't even have a god they can pray to that isn't a company mascot, as the religion is run by the board. These people are technically free to leave by getting thrown into the wilderness and starved to death. Unless they know where to find a group of survivors that live outside the board, they're out of luck. 
If you play the game, you are free to choose between taking the side of the board or the side that wants to dismantle the system. Even though the game does nudge you against the board, it does a great job of showcasing different viewpoints that don't boil down to one side is good and the other is evil. It goes to show how much destruction and chaos bringing down an entire economic system can bring. There's so much nuance in this discussion that it could become its own video, though probably by someone smarter than your average mailman. Ah, oh, excuse me, I'm suddenly experiencing quite an amazing headache. Good writing can be felt almost immediately. It's what separates Red Dead Redemption 2 from Halo 5, and some of Obsidian's strongest traits have been their writing and world building. Their writing is one of the reasons Fallout 4 fell flat for me, because the previous game, New Vegas, that was also developed by Obsidian, was much superior in the writing department. Once again, that good writing shows up in the outer worlds, with the way Obsidian tackles these deeper, relatable themes and throws them into a pulpy science fiction game with their sense of black humor added in, it's masterfully done. Wait, what the fuck is this? Is this French? I can't fucking read French. As you run into and converse with the first couple of characters, You'll notice each one has their own backstory, their allegiances to whatever faction they belong to, and just general opinions that make them anything but boring. I never wanted to skip through the dialogue because I genuinely wanted to know more about these characters. And going through these dialogue expositions is so far ingrained into the Outer Worlds, at times it has more in common with a classic CRPG than your general first-person action RPG. It's like the game takes a page or two from Obsidian's own Pillars of Eternity. Where the writing really shines though is in your party. As you travel through the Outer Worlds, you come across six companions, each with their own background, opinions, and personalities that make you want to know more about them. They remind me of the companions in Mass Effect. You can talk and hang around them on your ship, the Unreliable, and the more you interact with them, you'll unlock their own unique companion quest. Unfortunately, you can only take two with you on your travels. If I could, I would have brought the entire party because I genuinely love the characters. It was always fun to hear them chat to themselves as we're walking through a town or see how each one of them can interact with certain situations. I'm gonna... Hey, Felix! Look, everyone, it's Felix! Well, hey there, your lordship. Good to see you again. The combat for the Outer Worlds is simple. It's not bad by any means. It feels nice, and it serves its purpose of moving you through the game. There is decent customization for your weapons. You can even modify the type of damage your weapon does, such as shock, which gives extra damage towards robots, or plasma, giving you more damage towards organics. There's even some novelty guns called science guns that allow you to do interesting things to your enemies. You can carry up to four at a time, so you can always be well equipped along your travels. The game features its own take on Fallout's VAT system. It's called Time Dilation. It's more similar to Bullet Time for Max Payne in that it allows you to slow down time and target individual limbs of an enemy. Hitting your enemy's weak spots will add some extra punch to your attacks. What the Outer Worlds does differently though, is having typical non-combat related skills such as hacking or persuasion be used in combat. You can hack robots during a fight, making them friendly, or if your persuasion is high enough, enemies will run and cower from you. I wish more RPGs would implement this idea. It eliminates trying to balance non-combat skills and combat skills and allows for more interesting builds. Here's a little trick I learned in prison. The companions that you bring with you also have their own unique abilities, but to be honest, I rarely use them more than once due to how easy the Outer Worlds already is. And really, that's my main complaint with the game. It's simply too easy. For my build, I focused on persuasion, lockpicking, and hacking, and I never had a moment where I felt like I needed to throw some points into the combat skills. By the end of the game, I was a smooth-talking IT tech of a god who could smite everyone that gets in his way. Something wrong? Not to worry. The Outer Worlds is a fantastic game, and I cannot recommend it enough, especially if you're a fan of Fallout, Mass Effect, or RPGs in general. If you don't want to buy the brand new edition that contains the enhancements and DLC, you can try the base game on Game Pass to see if you like the Outer Worlds. It's not the best choice, it's Spacer's choice! Thank you so much for watching. If you're a fan of the Outer Worlds or Obsidian's other games, write a comment down below. Let's talk video games. Or subscribe if you want to hear more from my friends and I sharing our love for games. Thanks again everyone, and I hope you're having a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.